Hi. Thanks for taking the time to uh, spend a few minutes listening to this very brief recording on the creation of content uh, content for blended and flipped learning and for MOOCs. Uh, just before we get started, let's just make sure that we're all clear uh, what we're talking about here. So just a little bit on definitions. Blended is a fairly simple idea, blended learning, which is really that some of the learning is done online and some of it is done in a face to face mode. Probably what's more interesting is the flipped learning, which is a form of blended learning that's more specific in which the content of the course is delivered online uh, students would tend to listen to this content before coming to the class and you may want quizzes uh, that are available only before class to ensure that they do and then when they arrive in class you know they've covered this content and they do exercises or assignments in the class uh, so that's where the word flipped, flipped comes from. They do the class outside the class, as it were, and they do the homework in the class. Okay, and then MOOCs, the massive open online courses. They're essentially large-scale courses, free. Anybody can access to them, and they are, of course, online. Now, because they're large-scale, it's really not practical to have much instructor involvement. In other words, they work through the materials themselves. However, it's probably quite important that they have access to other people doing the courses, that they can get peer support, and sometimes a small amount of instructor support as well. Also that the assessment has to be scalable, so you would use automated multiple choice quizzes for the lower order uh, learning outcomes. But for the higher order learning outcomes, it's also practical and fairly accurate to use peer assessments where they review each other's assignments and give grades that way. So now what I'm going to be talking about here is mostly the flipped and MOOC. Anything about blended you can take as a sort of partially on the way to being flipped as it were. So we're going to talk about flipped and MOOCs. And first of all I want to talk about how they're related to each other. So have a look at this. Uh, well they're both sort of related to each other and insofar as they're both based on content. We've got to create some content that people can watch, listen to, read or whatever. So if the content is there, and that may be videos and quizzes, for example, uh, you essentially have a MOOC, okay, if you allow open access to that content. It's a fairly simple idea. Just put your content up there, allow open access, you have a massive open online course. Now, if you if you get people to watch that content and then come to a classroom, a face-to-face -face classroom in which they take part in assignments, you essentially have flipped learning. So you can see how they both relate to the content here. And the development of the content is much the same for both. I would just like to add on this point is it's not an either or. You can actually do both. Both. You can develop content, allow open access, and make it a MOOC. You can allow your campus-based students access to it and then add face-to-face -face contact with your campus students or by the way your distance learning students if you want in the terms of webinar and then you essentially do a MOOC and a flipped classroom with the same content. Okay so I hope the concepts are a bit clearer now. So really what we're doing is we're talking about the challenge of developing content for both flipped learning and for MOOCs. So what would this content be? Well, typically a number of recordings each week, uh, three to six short recordings each wee week, the optimum length, about seven minutes. It's been shown that people like it chopped down into small lengths, uh, tackling individual small topics. That saves six, seven, 42. That doesn't seem like a lot of minutes for a particular class group that you might be doing every week. But you, if once you take out the interactivity that you have in class and really cut it to its minimum, which is what people tend to like, you can cover a lot in that time. You don't have to cover everything in the videos either because there's lots of good materials out there. In fact, you don't have to do videos at all if you can source good existing materials out there. So you should probably point them to additional reading or viewing every week. That could be compulsory or it could be uh, additional optional reading materials. Um, you really need to have some sort of a continuous assessment insofar as it motivates people to pay attention. So we know that quizzes, it's difficult to do quizzes to 
to assess deep learning, but at least we can use quizzes to check did they even listen to the videos or read the material. We can have questions on maybe new keywords that they learned, you know, or definitions. Fairly trivial questions. So it probably is important to have a quiz every week. And if you want to allow them to take the quiz several times over, uh, it might be as well to have a bank of questions. And each time they sit the quiz, they get different uh, questions. As I say, in flipped learning, you probably require them to do that quiz before they come in to the classroom. Okay, uh, in a MOOC, it would just be an encouragement for them to 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 uh, listen to the videos and it can be used as the basis for a certificate of attendance. Now, assignments, we could give them more challenge assignments, but in a MOOC, it'll be important and possible to grade these. But within your course uh, in, in, a, in a college, you could grade these, the tutor could grade these, but it, you might want to design them in such a way so they can grade each other ones. By the way, peer grading is also considered to be a very effective learning experience for students within a college, so you might like to design your assignments in the first place so that they can be graded by their peers as well. Uh, and, and it's also found uh, to be quite accurate, that students are amazingly accurate at grading, and it's a difficult system to game uh, because they're also graded on their accuracy of grading people, so uh, there is some incentive for them to be as accurate as they can. Okay, so how about getting this done? We want to develop this content. Uh, we don't want to spend too much time on it. We don't want to spend a fortune on it. So one of the things about it is to take a very simple approach with it. So we'd probably have a recommended standard way of producing videos. Might have t templates or design patterns that we can give you to help you quickly put together. Now, a lot of you will have PowerPoints already, and really what you need to do is just chunk them into smaller chunks. Maybe insert um, opening slides and uh, slightly finishing slides, which might be just an overview of what we've just done. So you'd have chunk up your existing slides. We might have a simple workflow. Uh, we may be in a position to or, uh, to give support on doing this. So we have a simple workflow where you do your work and you pass it on to somebody else. It's all kept very simple so you can get the support you need to. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Uh, we You need to be provided with reliable hardware and support to get this done. And all of this we hope to provide in IT Sligo to people who want to flip their classroom or to produce simple MOOCs. The templates that I'm talking about might be simple things on course design where you just fill in the details about how you're going to do it, what videos you're going to produce, what your learning outcomes you're going to address with each video, and that type of thing. There might be standard slides that we could, well, you might want to use your own slides, but we could provide you with standard slides that have branding on them if you want that. You know. uh, quizzes uh, can be a bit of a challenge, but it is possible to write all your quiz questions. You know, the, the stem of the question, the different option answers, which one is the right one. Very simple way in a Word document and get somebody else to load them for you. So we can make it as simple as possible for you to produce the quizzes. Uh, discussion assignments at which students are required to take part in discussions online can be a little tricky to design, but can provide you with a Word document with boxes in it, and you just have to fill in the boxes. And again, with peer assessment, the same is true with that. Once you know what information is needed to create a peer assessment, and if we ask you those questions in a, a form in a Word document, uh, you just need to fill those in, and we can load them into the system for you. Okay, recording. Uh, it may not be possible to provide every lecturer with really good equipment at their desk uh, or with all the software installed. So we'd probably recommend that maybe you use the uh, recording booths for doing this, which has all the software you need and good, equip uh, good equipment, including the ability to be able to draw on your slides using the, um, um, the graphics screen that we have there. Um, uh, you can record directly from within PowerPoint. So if you're the, if you've got a lot of materials in PowerPoint, it's really easy to move to recording them. There is an add-in in the PowerPoint in the booths. It's a Camtasia add-in that allows you just to easily record. And this is exactly what I'm doing at the moment now, by the way. Okay. Um, we can have what's called planned spontaneity. In other words, you want to make it a bit more like a real classroom. So leave yourself some space 
and uh, when it comes to the class just start drawing now I don't have a graphics tablet on the screen so I'm just gonna pick a pen here and see if I can draw not very well what works much better if you have a graphics tablet okay but you can plan to do things on the fly in your class and it replicates what you're doing in the classroom so it's not hard to do if I can figure out how to move on to the next slide now okay if you're the type of person that does things on the computer and you want to show it to your students you can easily do that by recording your screen okay um, uh, now this uh, there's a few steps in it that you may be able to avoid that increase the workload for instance um, you may you can take the video that you record and you can place your your mugshot somewhere on it you can take stuff out do various things but chances are you'd prefer not to do it and we'd like to provide you with that service rather than you having to do it but if you really want to do it that can be done that's processing your video afterwards and then you need to publish it somewhere you could put it on YouTube you could put it up in uh, on the one of the college servers servers put the produced video somewhere uh, again uh, if, if you don't want to get involved in that we'd probably recommend that most staff don't get involved in it uh, we can you can hand that off to somebody else and of course then you have to link to wherever th that is from your uh, your platform which is Moodle in our case so uh, that's another task that needs to be done with each video but again we'd like to provide that service to you rather than have you do it okay and with and with that in mind we're suggesting a lean workflow that would look something like this where you record a video it might be seven minutes another good reason to have them short is if you're not happy it's there's very little chance or not a lot of chance of serious errors in a short video and if there is a serious area it's f er error it's very easy to do again so this might be a way of doing it record a video just save it in a Dropbox where somebody else can pick it up uh, do it three times uh, even if you're happy or not happy with it just do it three times it's as easy to do three times once you have it prepared uh, you pass it on to somebody who's going to do the editing they'll choose the best of the three of them if the worst comes to the worst and there's an error in the best of the three they might be able to chop a little bit out of the other two and add it in and check to see uh, is it acceptable now if between the three videos they don't find an acceptable one there probably is a problem with how you do your recording so they should get back to you and give you some advice on how to easily create an acceptable recording but chances are it'll e with three videos they're bound to get an acceptable one out of it they'll get that do a little bit of work on it maybe top and tail it even it doesn't really matter but uh, uh, publish it uh, and set a link uh, from your Moodle area so all you really need to do is record the three videos and then it should appear in your Moodle uh, there is another way to do this which is using the lecture capture system from Panopto that's quite a good system as well um, but uh, we'll cover that separately uh, but the reason I do want to measure the lecture capture system is if you don't want to go for the short type of videos uh, you can actually go for uh, for a full year give your classes in a regular lecture and this will record you as you do it and then the following year you can make those recordings available in a flipped mode for your students that's another really quick way of moving your class into a flipped mode okay now remember you don't have to do it all yourself uh, there's lots of great materials out in the web so maybe consider the idea of getting uh, good at searching the web for good materials here's just one I just uh, did a random I put in titration techniques and uh, uh, got out all these videos on how to do it you might have to look at a few to pick the best one this might be the sort of thing you might give to your students and they have to watch it and maybe answer a quiz before they come to the lab and do some work on titration so there's lots of good stuff out there you may not have to create it okay so what are the next steps well we'd like you to let us know that you want to do a simple MOOC uh, that's a free open online course that anyone can access or that you want to flip your classroom uh, um, uh, one of the things about flipping the classroom is that you shouldn't have to spend as much time with your students but you should be allocated the same time so you might want to run it by your head of department see if you can flip or reduce contact time of course you can flip and, and have the same contact time but uh, there's a fair amount of work in it so you might want to actually reduce your contact to give you some space to do the work so you may need to talk to your head of department uh, get the tools 
Uh, I mean, I'd highly recommend that you use the booths, but the tools themselves are not expensive and you could get them on your own machine at work or at home. Camtasia and Panopto might be the main tools to use. Um, and then learn how to use them, do some recording. I would say skip the publishing, try and get some help from us on the publishing end of it. Uh, write some quizzes uh, for each week. Um, find alter all other materials, additional materials as well, and maybe set up some assignments. So I would say just get stuck in. But let us know that you want to do it. That's a most important thing. Okay, thanks for taking the time listening. Uh, and that's it. Bye now.